Welcome to the Introduction to Workflows in JavaScript webinar. I'm Scott Adams, and I'm a technical writer for Utrack and Hub. And I am Maria Davidova, a software developer for Utrack and one of the principal developers for the workflow feature. In this webinar, we show you how to write workflows in JavaScript and explain how this feature has evolved into its current implementation. So just to get started, here's the basic overview for our, this is our agenda. We want to give you a general overview and at the same time provide some real life examples for different rules and scripts. After the overview, we'll work with a relatively basic but very popular use case and show you how we can support this use case by writing different types of rules. We'll provide examples of on change rules, action, on schedule, state machine rules, and show you how you can support each of these rules with custom scripts. The last thing we'll do is provide an example that uses webhooks to integrate with an external application. So we have a webinar workflow 2017.3 channel. We created this community to provide a central location where you can interact with our development team and get direct answers to workflow related questions. So this is something that we will continue to use following this, uh, this webinar and going forward. So uh, let's get down to business. There are two major changes that have been implemented in this feature. The first and most obvious change is that you no longer need to download and install this guy, the external workflow editor to write workflows for Utrack. And I think anybody who's worked with this in the past knows that that's actually a really special thing. Um, our developers have built a workflow editor that you can access right in the browser. So no additional assembly is required. And I'm going to leave the presentation now and go straight into Utrack, so you can see it right here. So the second big change is that uh, you no longer need to learn a domain-specific programming language to write your workflows. This is just plain old JavaScript. This means most of what you see here, all of the functions and declarations, uh, this is all JavaScript. The modules that you need to access the methods and properties that are related to the entities in Utrack are already plugged into, I've got it expanded here, this is the Utrack scripting API. So everything that is basically pulled into a workflow uh, is, is, is mentioned here for reference. The basic concept behind workflows has not changed at all. Workflows are a tool that you can use to customize how you manage issues and can be configured independently for different projects. So you still have this page, this is in the administration section of Utrack, where you see all of your workflows and their rules, and you decide which projects these are attached to. This, is, this workflow is automatically attached to all workflows. That's what this auto-attached property is. All projects, sorry. And um, you can manage the status of these workflows and rules independently. In the previous version, we had strict definitions for three different types of rules. Now, uh, we have the ability to write custom scripts. And with custom scripts, you have a little more flexibility. You can create a workflow that contains no rules at all. It can just be a collection of modules that are used by other workflows. So instead of being a collection of rules, a workflow acts as a collection of modules, some of which can contain or define rules. This will start to make a lot more sense when you see workflows in action. And Maria is going to show you uh, right now, she's gonna walk through different rules and scripts by building a workflow that solves a specific problem for a typical development team. So Maria, tell us a little bit more about this team and how they can fix their process with a workflow. Thank you, Scott. Uh, well, this team has the following development process. Each issue is considered to be resolved and ready for verification, only after being uh, both implemented and reviewed. However, developers basically uh, like to write code and do not like to review it, so they often tend to forget about uh, pending reviews. Our goal is to remind developers to make reviews too. So, the project structure, let's see our project. The project structure is almost the same as the default one. We have added an additional state value, which is pending review. Uh, it is unresolved and goes between in progress and fixed states. 
Uh, and we have added a custom field reviewer, which is uh, a user type field and has the same uh, set of values as the field assignee. You can see uh, developers group both here and here for assignee. We have also removed most of default states from the uh, default uh, for, from the state field uh, in case of simplicity of one of our following rules. First of all, uh, we want to be sure that our reviewers are notified about the fact that they are set as reviewers. Uh, in our default setup, each user is subscribed to the issues which this person is watching. That is, the issues uh, for which this person has a star tag on them. So the first thing we want to do is to make the reviewer to auto watch uh, the issue when uh, this person is set as reviewer. So we go to workflows. Let's go here and create a new workflow. Let's call it reviewers. And save. And here you can see the uh, landing page for our workflows. Uh, here you see several buttons for creating different types of modules. Each module can either contain a rule or a set of common functions and objects, uh, the one which we call custom module. Uh, so let's create an unchanged rule first uh, and call it star reviewer. I have it auto completed already. So we can go to the full screen uh, in non destruction mode, remove all these useless panels for now and see this code. Uh, when you create uh, some kind of rules using this, uh, one of these buttons, you get a template. Uh, this template contains uh, the rule uh, with all the properties. Um, necessary for this rule to be uh, valid. Also, this uh, template contains a, a comment uh, with a reminder what kind of rules you are creating and uh, what uh, this rule uh, is expected to do, and the link to our guide. If you have never written workflows in your track, this guide is a, a perfect place to start. You can also find a link uh, to this guide uh, in our, on this page, on this page, um, okay, uh, under the question mark here. Uh, you go to details and you go to our beautiful Quickstar guide. So let's come back to the editor itself. We do not need this comment now. So what do we want to do? We want um, to do the following. At the moment when the field reviewer is changed to some user, we want to add a star for this issue and this user. Uh, each template contains a list of useful to-dos which guide you through the process of creating a rule. The first to-do is to give a human readable title. So we give some title for this rule for on-change rules, uh, title is just um, a mean to help an administrator to understand what this rule does without looking into the actual code. Uh, this rule is just stars, um, is just starring the reviewer. Then you have to specify the conditions for executing the rule. Uh, if this condition is not met, we won't even run the action. But if the condition is met, we will run the action. Uh, and that's it, basically. So uh, our condition would be, as I said, uh, when the reviewer is set to someone. So we want to return uh, context issue fields is changed context reviewer. I will explain this line in a moment. Uh, and also context issue uh, fields 
reviewer. What does this mean? Uh, context is a special object which is uh, passed to the function uh, which is uh, set as guard property and the same object is passed to action. This object contains uh, an issue which is currently uh, somehow processed by workflow. In case of on change rule, uh, it is an issue which is being changed right now. So uh, it's an issue where we change our field reviewer at the moment. Uh, also, this uh, context object contains a user who is performing the change, and also this object contains a list of uh, requirements, a list of objects that are defined in the last section, the section of requirements. I will uh, tell a little bit more about requirements when we come to this to-do, but for now you need to know that we will define the requirement reviewer and it's going to be the custom field which our project has. So we say that if the field uh, of current issue named reviewer is changed and it is not now, it's a JavaScript way to check uh, object for now. Then we have to do some action. We do not need this to do now. And we can go right to the action. Uh, so we can use we can use um, additional variables to make our scripts better. For example, we can um, just make a shortcut variable for issue. We could have made a shortcut for fields here. We could make uh, something like uh, var uh, f or var fields equals uh, context issue fields, but we do not need if the line is short. Anyway, our template contains this variable for issue in action. So what we do, we just call the method we get our reviewer, which is not now because we checked it in guard, and say, please reviewer, watch this issue. This one we are looking at. And that's it for our action. And now we have to define the requirements. Requirements contain a list of objects uh, first of all, project fields and maybe some other objects like users, user groups, projects, and so on, which are necessary to this rule um, to work. In our case, our project has to have a reviewer field. Otherwise, it can't work at all. Uh, I mean, this rule can't work because it will just fail with an entity not found exception or something like that because you don't have a reviewer field. You have nothing to check. So we define this field of type and it is, sorry, user field type. And that's it. We do not need any other uh, field here. And every object that is defined in requirements is also added to the context that object I told you a minute ago, which goes to guard, which goes to action. So we can uh, reference these um, properties from other parts of the rule. Well, our rule is ready. We can now check that it works. Just a quick demo. So we go to the project setup and our game production. Edit project, workflows, and attach our reviewers workflow. It is successfully attached. And you can see that it has no warnings because everything is fine with this rule. You can also preview the content of the rule without going to the editor. And we can check that if we create some new game issue like game, I don't know, with 3D and create it. And now we set a reviewer, me. Then I 
appear in watches. I have a star tech assigned to this issue. Uh, if we go to our uh, inbox, we will see that I will also get a notification, but authentications in your track are collected in 60 seconds interval, so we won't see it right now. We'll see it in a minute. Uh, in the meantime, maybe we have some questions. We don't have any questions in the in the in the uh, go to webinar that are related to on change rules. We do have a question that relates to states, and I think I'm going to put that on hold until we talk about state machine rules. Um, but if you if you do have questions, uh, please post them to the questions panel, and we will answer them as we go along. Okay, okay, let's go further. So far, so good. Now our reviewers know that they uh, have to review something. But what if they still forget to do it because they get this notification and then no reminders? Yeah, usual case. As a first option, let's use uh, a rule which allow us to send a reminder manually. Let me show you the rule itself. I have prepared it for you. And where are you? Reviews we one think reviewer. Let's use uh, an action rule. For this rule, we're going to use notify method. Uh, and what is the action rule? Action rule is something relatively new to your track because we had an action rule uh, for a long time, I think about two years or something like that, uh, which is called clone. Uh, and this rule allows you to clone current issue and it is auto attached. If you ever used this functionality, uh, I bet you didn't even think that it's a workflow. Um, and as we created uh, these um, types of rules, we didn't add the support of these uh, rules to our old editor. Uh, so now we present them uh, in our new editor. Uh, and these types of rules allows you to run a custom command uh, following some guard, which will do some action. Let's see uh, what this rules uh, what this rule does. Uh, it has a title. Uh, this time, title has a bit more uh, sense because uh, the title is a text which is uh, put into a uh, common dialog drop down uh, in issue um, toolbar. And it helps you to remember uh, what this uh, command is expected to do. The command itself uh, is uh, uh, suggested in a, a common dialog and it is added to the list of all commands of the Utrek instance. Uh, guard here has a little bit different meaning than the guard in a change rule because uh, guard here uh, defines when this command is applicable and when it is even shown uh, in the completions of uh, common dialog and in the toolbar. So uh, our guard would be uh, if we have a reviewer, which is not null, and if our state is currently pending review, you can see a pending review state defined in requirements. It's just a shortcut for it, PR. Uh, then we want to send a reminder. This makes sense because uh, you do not want to send a reminder if the reviewer is set uh, for a resolved issue or if the reviewer is set um, for a, an issue which is currently in progress. Uh, and you do not want to send a reminder in DevNow. You have to have a reviewer, actually. Uh, so what we do, we define uh, a subject and a body. An issue link, just uh, one of the variables to make the code shorter and more accurate. Uh, we define this body and use the notify method to uh, send a message with a given subject and a given body uh, to this person. This is an instant method. So we won't have to wait, uh, we won't have to uh, wait for 60 seconds. We can just check it right away. So let's do it. 
let's go to our okay music we have oh we have nothing pending review here let's go to ah oh, did i want to show it right now or next it's game okay let's uh, take some music uh, in review it's song about peace it should be reviewed by me again and i do not like to make reviews believe me uh, in this painting let's send a notification but we can't let's ping reviewer and now we're gonna get reminder which tells me please do not forget to review that issue <laughs> please <laughs> so um, do you have any questions about action rules? We do have a we do have a question in the, in the chat, and uh, someone is asking if we could elaborate a little bit more about what is a uh, guard. Uh, guard. What's the difference between guard and requirements? Well, requirements um, are the list of the objects that are necessary uh, for this rule to be valid. Uh, if the requirements are not met, I mean, if there are no such objects existing uh, in your instance or no such fields attached to your project, then the rule won't be ever uh, executed. Uh, just to be sure that you won't get some null pointer exception or something like that. Guard is a condition. Uh, guard defines uh, some specific uh, properties of the current issue that should be uh, met uh, for this rule to be uh, executable. Uh, first, when the rule is executed, the guard is run, and if it returns true, then the action is executed, actually. If it returns false, uh, then there is no uh, sense to even try to execute this action. Uh, so, uh, guards in action rules and guards in on change are slightly different. Uh, in on change rule, uh, there is a check uh, of each guard uh, at the point when you make a change, when you change something in an issue. And uh, for action rule, the guard uh, defines whether the uh, command is shown in um, completions in common dialogue or whether the uh, command with this title is shown uh, in the drop down i mean if condition is not met then you won't even get this action ping reviewer and you won't get a uh, ping reviewer suggestion does it make sense um also the, the requirements are going to be visible in the administrative ui so you will you will see there that if a project does not meet the requirements, for example, it doesn't have a specific custom field or it doesn't have one of the values that is specified in the requirements, you're gonna see a flag next to that workflow or workflow rule that says required setup. Yeah, I can even show you if you want. Okay, um, actually, for the sake of time, we're gonna move on okay. to the next topic. There are a few other questions, but we'll see if we can address some of those at the, uh, at the end of the session. Okay, great. Well, uh, pinging each reviewer manually works fine, as we see. But imagine you have a big team and dozens of issues waiting for review every day. It would be great to ping developers uh, automatically, right? We can do this as well. We can use on schedule rules. Let's see how it works. Let's switch to our on schedule rule. As you can see, this rule is more or less the same as the action rule. It has the same action, absolutely the same action, because we just copy pasted it. Uh, we define the subject body and notify our reviewer. Uh, the same requirements, because we need a review field and we need a state field, and we need this state field to have a pending review um, value in the set of values. Uh, it's absolutely the same as in previous rule. What is different is uh, two following things. Instead of guard, we use search. 
and instead of uh, manual command, we use a uh, Chrome-based schedule. Uh, search, um, well, on scheduled rules, as you may guess from their name, are uh, around based on schedule. Uh, and we define the schedule uh, via Chrome. In this case, it is 10 a.m. every business day from Monday to Friday. Uh, we get all the issues which uh, correspond to our search, which is uh, pending review, the state equals pending review, and reviewer is not null, which is has reviewer, has non-empty reviewer. Uh, and so this rule, uh, when it is enabled, will traverse over all these issues um, corresponding to this search uh, in the morning, um, every business day, and send the reviewers of each issue uh, the corresponding notification. Uh, there is one point to notice is that uh, here you can see that we have issue in context and it is important that the scheduled rule is run separately for each issue which is uh, which correspond the search so you will have several runs and the issue will be different every time but uh, the rule is basically the same I won't show you how it works because <laughs> it's not a 10 a.m. in our time zone, but still. Any questions? Nothing related to on-schedule rules in the chat. We do have something that we will cover. We have a question related to something we'll cover in one of the, uh, the next topics. So we're welcome to move right along to State Machine. Oh, yes. Great. State Machines. So there is one more way to send reminder to reviewer we can use a state machine rule. State machine rules allow us to define the legal transitions between values of some fields, often uh, of state fields, uh, as well as uh, add some additional scheduled actions. Let's look at our state machine. State machine rules are basically longer than other rules because they define all possible transitions between all states that you have. So you can see that we have open state here, in progress state, pending review, fixed, verified, and we want to go from one to another one. And I have missed duplicate states from this state machine just for the sake of simplicity because, well, you know, it's obvious. Uh, so uh, you can see in this rule that we have a reminder set for a pending review state. Uh, well, the structure of the rule that follows is as follows. We define a number of states which are open, in progress, and so on. Uh, one of them should be initial. Uh, in our case, it's open. Every issue which we create is going to have this initial state. And then we have transitions. From initial state, from open, we can go to in progress only. From in progress, we can go to reopen uh, because I don't know, for some reason, uh, people stopped working on this issue and want to reopen it, or to review because the issue is done. And then we are in pending review state and we have plenty of options from here. And some final states like fix it and verify it uh, with um, reopen options uh, to uh, be sure that we do not stuck in some state. Uh, so, you can see here on line 50 that we have a reminder uh, which is set to be triggered uh, in three days after issue becomes a pending review. Uh, after is a parameter that accepts milliseconds, so these are three days in milliseconds, you can believe me. And the action is again the same. We just send this notification. Uh, so, if you um, set your issue uh, in pending review, I don't know, in 2 uh, p.m. Uh, on Monday, then the notification will be sent on 2 p.m. on Thursday. Um, so, what is so cool about state machines is that you define all related actions, restrictions, reminders in one place. This makes the rule uh, maybe longer, but you know exactly how 
uh, the state, uh, which restrictions should be met when you uh, change the state, and uh, which maybe additional actions should be done. For example, uh, when we move an issue from in progress to review, we require that the SINE is set, the reviewer is set as well, and moreover, these are two different versions because maybe some SNE would like to trick the system and set himself and uh, go on with verif to verification, uh, but no, our workflow wouldn't allow that. And also, um, when we move an issue from open state to an SNE, we can set current user as SNE if it was not set before. Um, let's see how it works. I will show you some uh, demo on our Agile board. You see we have a song about connection here, uh, which is open. Let's move it. Uh, our account, which is Scott Adams here, is automatically set as uh, NSNE. Uh, and now we want to move it to pending review. We can do it this way, but we can't because we have to set a reviewer because it is a part of uh, restrictions we set in our state machine. So Scott wants to cheat and, sets, <laughs> and sets himself as a reviewer, but not, he cannot because I think he can't review our own code. Uh, we have to set another reviewer. Well, we know who will review Scott's uh, code. And now our task is successfully in pending review state, and I'm gonna get uh, another notification in a uh, short time um, saying that I have to review this code. Um, so, uh, do we have any questions about state machines? Nothing related to state machines. I'll make one quick observation about state machine rules and it's about how important it is. You like. Like Maria said, you can really pack a lot of customization into a single state machine rule. It's also very important to make sure that your team understands how the state machine works, because it's you know it's really not obvious to your average user that all of this functionality, all of this is supported by the state machine, and they might think that this is just Utrecht behaving badly. <laughs> which we get a lot of reports about. Actually, but we do. <laughs> we're getting a lot of questions in the chat that are related to uh, like webhooks and HTTP integrations. So we we'll, we'll <laughs> move along. That's coming up next. But uh, our next topic is actually going to be about uh, custom scripts. But it's going to be shut. Uh, don't worry. We will be near HTTP really soon. But let's look at custom scripts. Um, if you look again at our action uh, on schedule and this uh, part of state machine, you will see that our, um, that our, no, no, not this part, I'm sorry, <laughs> this part of state machine, you will see that our uh, actions are the same. And this is a good thing to uh, move into a custom script. Custom script allows us to extract similar parts and reuse them. Uh, I will show you how to create a custom script. It's very simple. We can uh, use, we can go to the landing page, which I have shown you already with buttons, or we can use this plus sign to create a script. Uh, and we gonna call it notify. Save. Uh, this script, uh, this template also has um, a comment at the very beginning, which reminds you how to use uh, these uh, scripts uh, from outside, from other scripts. We can remove it. And what we do is as follows. We define a function. We call it ping reviewer by email. I have the same function in other rule. That's why I have the completion for it. It makes the thing faster. Uh, oh, sorry. It's going to be a function which accepts context. And we can just uh, copy paste the uh, content of our 
actions to this function. We're going to take this, paste it here, and also we can reformat code or use Control Alt L to make it pretty. And now we have a custom script, which is called notify. We can now replace uh, all this code in our action with this uh, function, but we have to require uh, the script first. Require notify. And now we just take and replace. We just call notify being reviewer by email context. Actually, that's it. We can do the same change in other rules, but we don't need to. I think that it's clear. We can make it even shorter. We can not uh, make a variable function to call this uh, being reviewer by email function. We can just replace it. We can say that our action is going to be this, just a function. If you can define your uh, common part of the code in this manner, you can make it even shorter. So this is all about custom scripts. We do, we do have a question in the chat that seems to be related to custom scripts. Uh, we, we do have uh, someone's asking here. Um, uh, if uh, I guess I guess Sasha's already answered the question, so it's disappeared from my list. <laughs> Hang on one second. Uh, and so the the question is: Is there a way of loading external scripts into the online code editor? Uh, so if you know if I want to load an external JSON rule in the state machine rule. Um. I think that Sasha as our a uh, technical developer. <laughs> Could you please read Sasha's answer just to make it absolutely clear? I, I could if I could see it. Sorry. Um, Sasha's going to answer the question for us. Hi, everyone. Uh, so since there are these uh, uh, custom scripts that Mary mentioned, so the first thing uh, you can do is actually to export your JSON from uh, one of such scripts and uh, use it in uh, your rule. Um, this is how you do things in JavaScript, actually. Uh, we can elaborate in Slack if uh, somebody requires. Uh, so the second thing is uh, uh, that uh, we are now currently working on uh, uh, NPM uh, related infrastructure so you will be able to create such uh, things faster on your local environment. Uh, I believe that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Sasha, very much. Uh, do we have any other questions about custom scripts? Uh, let's move on to uh, webhooks. Yes, webhooks. Thing that everyone was waiting for, right? Well, you may wonder why we call it our function ping reviewer by email. That is because uh, we can ping them via uh, other information channels as well. For example, we can send notifications in a common Slack channel, reminding people that they have to review the code. Let me show you how it looks. Let's go to a different uh, prepared workflow, which is review second version. And this is our notify script, uh, a complete version of it. And you can see another, another function here, which is being reviewers in Slack. So how do, uh, does our HTTP module works? Oh, first of all, you have to require HTTP uh, module if you want to do something uh, with um, HTTP, uh, HTTP calls, uh, and then uh, then uh, the function which sends notification uh, to Slack is actually very simple. Uh, this part is just a setup. We uh, get 
an issue, we create a link uh, for this issue in uh, Slack uh, Markdown. We define the message uh, with the name of the reviewer and link and all that stuff. And we set up the payload, uh, which contains a channel and attachments. Uh, Slack API has a very good documentation. You can find any kind of details uh, about the payload there. Uh, in our case, we just define a payload as a uh, JSON, as a user JavaScript object. Uh, and then we have to post this uh, payload to the URL, which is uh, defined for the Slack webhook. To get this URL, you have to visit this link. Uh, and uh, in our case, we have already done that. We get a URL for some channel, which you will probably soon see. So we have defined all the stuff we need. And here, when the magic happens, we define the connection. It is a connection object from HTTP module. It has a URL as the main parameter. And also, it has a parameter of um, timeout. In case of uh, Slack, for some reason, uh, doesn't respond in two seconds, then uh, the connection will be dropped. Uh, it is required to ensure that your uh, changes uh, won't hang forever. Uh, if uh, your external server, your integrated tweets, uh, doesn't respond for some reason. So we create a connection and we make a post. Uh, sync post to that connection, to that URL. We can define additional part of the URL here. Uh, we can define query parameters, but for this uh, webhook, we do not need them. And we send the payload as a, a stringified uh, version of the JSON. So we just get uh, this payload uh, object, make a string of it, and push it to uh, our webhook. So in case of uh, response is not successful, we're going to add some warning uh, to the console. Uh, console is a part of our editor and a very good tool for debugging some stuff. Uh, it is this one. We do not have any errors here, so it's empty. Uh, but we can add some information, some um, error processing, and other stuff in this uh, uh, log. Uh, in console, and these uh, messages are also added to the workflow log of your instance. So, I can show you that this thing works as well. Let's go to, say, video production. Movie about cats. Everybody likes cats. Let's ping reviewer in Slack and check our Slack. Oh, do you see? Those who are in Slack now uh, probably uh, see the reminder, the message from our reminder, which reminds me that I have to review that issue, finally. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, OK, what is uh, really? <laughs> Yes, what is really cool about uh, Slack integration is that uh, in case um, if you have synchronized the logins uh, in Utrecht and Slack, uh, you can uh, change the channel parameter of the payload to the login of the person. And in this case, uh, notifications will be sent directly. Uh, to the person uh, who has to review them. So if you are very nervous about the stuff being reviewed in time, you may send both uh, Slack notifications, direct Slack notifications, um, some notifications uh, in common channel to blame reviewers that do not review their code, emails <laughs> and all that stuff. So I think that's it about HTTP. Uh, do we have questions? We do. We do actually. We have a we have a few questions which uh, which I will address. Just want to show you what we end up with as a result of of everything that uh, 
Maria has done here. So here's this this uh, workflow uh, reviewers version one. So this, like I said at the beginning of the presentation, workflows are a collection of modules. And some of them, you know, this one is, is not a rule itself, but these rules have different, uh, di different behaviors and can be applied independently in different projects. So if you've got a project team that wants to use Slack notifications, they can enable one of these guys. You've got a, another project that wants to do the whole state machine, they can attach the state machine and disable the other rules if they don't want to do the ping over email and stuff like that. Now the integration with Slack is a popular use case and a classic example that shows you how to use the properties and methods that come from the uh, our HTTP module in the workflow API. It is popular enough that we have added it to the set. This is uh, most of what you see here. This is a pretty clean instance. And these are all of the, the default workflows. I don't know, I'm just showing this one. Um, <clears throat> that have all been rewritten in JavaScript. So we have here Slack notifications. And uh, this is just kind of a, a basic, this is generic. This is actually uh, contributed to us by a developer by the name of Michael Rush, featured it in a blog post, was writing about Utrack. And um, basically all you have to do to make this work is replace this variable here with your webhook URL that Maria showed you. There's a link in here that you can go to and pull this from Slack. And this will uh, send a notification to a channel in Slack when an issue is created, resolved, or reopened. You can customize this if you want. You can copy it and have different versions of it. If you've got one team that wants to uh, ignore, uh, not send notifications to Slack for issues that are resolved because it's too spammy, for example and things like that. So uh, in the documentation, we had a question about whether or not we support other types of push style integrations. You know, can we integrate this with HipChat? Can we integrate this? Can we use a workflow to integrate with Microsoft Messenger? Um, it, <laughs> it depends. Um, we do have a sample in the documentation of a workflow that can be used to integrate with a um, the harvest, uh, here we go, this guy right here. So harvest is a time tracking service online. And this particular integration, what it'll do, uh, it'll give you one, one rule that will, uh, when a, an issue moves from an open to an in-progress state, we'll start the timer in the connected service. This rule here will stop the timer automatically when an issue moves from in progress to a state that's considered to be resolved. And we've got uh, another rule here, post work item. What this is going to do is going to take the value from a custom field uh, with the name, uh, I can't remember what it's called, it's down there, billable hours. And we'll post that as a work item in the Harvest web service. So if you, you're using this external service to track your time and the billable hours that are spent by you and your, your team. Uh, you can set this up and create your own integration, even, you know, customize it and make it work in your own way. So that's just a couple of examples of, of different integrations that you can build using workflows. Um, that brings us to the end of the formal presentation, we do have, uh, I see about seven minutes left over for uh, generic questions and answers. And I'm wondering if we have anything for, uh, let's see, pardon? Do we have questions about HTTP? We did have questions related to HTTP and I hope that I've answered them oh, okay. <laughs> as, as I did the last part of that presentation. Um, there were, I'll just pull out a couple of uh, questions that I found uh, kind of interesting. Um, somebody is asking if it's possible to use the old workflows and the new workflows together. Yes, that is absolutely possible. We're going to support old workflows for quite a time because we understand that it's not a uh, one moment transition. Uh, the only uh, restriction is that you can have uh, old rules and new rules in one workflow. You should have one workflow and other workflow. And the other problem is that 
you cannot edit old workflows in new editor. Well, that makes sense, but maybe it's just something to point out. Yeah, but old workflows, thing, old editor, new workflows, new editor. New yeah. editor. Just keep it nice and clean. Absolutely. But uh, you can use uh, old workflows and new workflows in one instance without any problems. Uh, however, we strongly recommend to slightly move uh, when you have time to new workflows because they are cool. Absolutely. Um, somebody, I, I saw this previously and, and we have provided an answer for this and uh, the question is, um, are, are we, uh, like the rules that we're writing now, are these going to be available later? We will be posting all of the code that we, we've shared in this presentation to the blog and uh, that will be, uh, we also are in the process of building a, uh, we have an old custom workflow repository mm -hmm. that contains at this moment in time, all of the, the, the workflows that were developed in the old domain specific mm -hmm. programming language. So we mm -hmm. don't have, uh, we, we are looking and investigating to options for providing a central location for people to share workflows that are written in JavaScript. I don't know if there's anything else you want yeah, to say. Yeah, no, 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 that's, that's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. uh, dun, 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 dun. I'm just trying to see if there's anything else that we have, we have time to answer in the next five minutes. Let's, uh, let's take a look at this one. Um, uh, is there a recommended way to test these JavaScript workflows without committing them to a live project? Is a test project the only way? Uh, right now, yes. A test project is good. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's good to, you know, to, to create something that's kind of isolated from the rest of the system and test your workflows there. Uh, maybe there is even better way to have a backup back up mm -hmm. and a uh, second instance, but this may be not possible. Might not be possible. You might have license limitations yeah, and yeah, things like stuff. that. But um, mm, yeah. But yeah, this project is absolutely fine, it's, uh, especially if you uh, restrict the visibility for the project so that nobody sees your experiments and you can just do whatever you want, uh, playing around waterfall scripts. Um, Okay, we, we um, do understand that this is not very convenient and people want to have some better uh, infrastructure and we are thinking about that. Well, but we do not have particular plans. We also have a sandbox installation in the cloud that if yes. you register for the sandbox, you are automatically assigned a project administrator role and can attach, or you can write and attach a workflow to any project in this instance. So it is someplace, I mean, it's it's public, so you're not playing all by yourself. You might have, you know, to worry about some things that other people yes, have written. But yeah, you can create your own project. You can uh, play around in the sandbox and, and test everything there. But one quick, um, I wanted to, to see if we could answer this one. Is it possible to write a workflow to enforce, to fill in time tracking in Utrack when changing state? Yes, oh, of course. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's a, uh, required fields is a very common use case. And, you know, having having dependencies between fields, absolutely. Uh, uh, we have recently added the support for adding workflow items. Uh, we are workflow. Work items. Now, work items, yep. yeah. Because recently, uh, previously we didn't have it. And we added it, I think, in 17.2, somewhat around it. So now you can uh, add a work item when you, uh, for example, move your issue from in progress to fixed. Uh, maybe you will have to add an additional field to uh, count the difference uh, between um, when it comes in progress and when it comes fixed and so on. But anyway, you can add work items from workflow, so this case can be solved now. All right. Any of the questions that we haven't had a chance to get to, we promise that we will we will provide answers either in Slack or um, uh, post the Q and A to our blog. I'm just going to go quickly before we leave. Thank you for uh, attending this webinar. 
uh, give you a rundown of some important resources. Learn more about Utrac by going to our product page at jetbrains.com. There's a lot of information available in the documentation. We do have two versions, one for standalone and one for in-cloud, but the documentation for workflows is identical. It's just you know, there are some small differences between these two products. Something that uh, Alexander Wolfman mentioned briefly, uh, we do have uh, all of the scripting API available as an NPM package. We are working on some additional functionality for that, but it is available at the moment. You can don't download it. You can plug it into an IDE and get all of the uh, auto-completion options, not only that are supported by the IDE, not only for JavaScript as a language, but also for the scripting API. Uh, so that will be fully supported and look for more information about that as we uh, deliver some uh, improvements to that on our blog. All right. Um, you can send us feedback at any time on uh, Twitter. Watch this presentation back or share the link with your colleagues who may have missed it on JetBrains TV. Do subscribe to our blog. Like I said, we will be providing additional information as it becomes available, and we have really short release cycles for Utrecht now, so we are delivering updates on a regular basis. And please, we beg you, join our team in Slack. It's going to be a great place. It's going to stay uh, stay around forever, well, for as long as we're here. And uh, it's, a, it's a great place for, for you to come to, and for us to hear about your questions and your concerns and uh, hopefully provide you all of the answers you're looking for. So thanks again for joining our webinar. We hope you enjoyed it and we look to share more with you later.